it's so exciting. You know, a lot of boxes arrive, which I'm grateful for, but this is kind of exciting. A homemade. And we're back, everyone. Come on over here, Michael. All right, we're gonna open this big box in one minute from the post office, but Michael has been patiently waiting to open up the next Bobo's box. Right, buddy? This was sent to uh, actually our old house, so we had to go retrieve it. So thank you for your patience. Oh yeah, watch your fingers. Sharp, sharp. Okay, let's set that over there. Okay, you ready? Sh shout out to Bobo's, Bo! You want to take the strawberry one up to mama? Okay, you want, he wants a chocolate chip. Who wants strawberry? All right, uh, you go tell mama that um, we love her. Okay, there we go. Keep posting your running videos and having a blast. Congrats on your back-to-back -back Pikes Peak victories. Seth, feel free to do a review. Just be careful with the twist test. Timmy, you're, bra you're, you're cracking me up, sir. Cake Buds Bakery. Come right here. Oh. We got some good peeps. My. You ready for this? Try One, on. two, three. Ah, oh, isn't that crazy? I don't know how to get it out though. I tried to get it out. Okay, yeah, I got this out, I got it. It's two. It's my racing shoe from the Pikes Peak Marathon. It's the Pulsar. That's it's epic. It's the Pulsar, everybody. Isn't that- It looks um, so real. It I looks, cannot believe. this is a cake. Shout out, I mean, that's incredible. Isn't that amazing? It's the Pulsar, unbelievable. Solomon. So, how did he I don't, do that? And I don't know how it's still all one piece. Cause but of dry ice. I guess so, so. You are amazing. Shout out. Hat off to you, that hat. is literally one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. I program. mean, that is amazing. I don't even want to open it. I like cut it. I do. I do. Sound effect here, sound effect here. Someone decided to surprise me with, there it is, oh my my. The Pulsar cake is in the house, in the basement. Are you kidding me? Oh, soak it in, soak it in. A cake master, we'll just call him a cake master, made a Solomon Pulsar cake and test 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 we're back one two three one two three okay live stream is done oh my goodness you guys are amazing showing up on a tuesday afternoon here we go pikes peak marathon training block analysis comparing it 2021 to 2020 now we have a little bit more information a little more data uh from year to year and uh i'm gonna get you the comment of the day actually up top here because it connects to pikes peak and this is not my analysis of the actual race. I did that maybe two weeks ago over in France, actually. Do my best to link to it below or upper right-hand corner. We shall see. Just type in Pikes Peak Analysis and you'll find it on the homepage of the channel. But first of all, shout out to Ron Hendricks. You get the comment of the day. He says Pikes Peak. So this is yesterday and this is a crazy story, everybody. Uh, this is crazy. So Ron says Pikes Peak Ascent. At age 70, I'm gonna go for the age group record. Still working my way back from a broken ankle last year, but so far so good. Ron, amazing, it just inspiration. I'll just leave it there, unbelievable. So here's the deal though. Yesterday's vlog, I asked the question of the day and I published, what is my 2022 racing schedule look like? I published the vlog, I wake up at early this morning and I start getting emails and, and messages on Twitter about Seth, did you hear, did you hear that? They are looking, this is, what a serendipity of timing and it's crazy, but basically the Pikes Peak Ascent and Marathon Organizing Committee is looking at bumping next year's Pikes Peak Marathon to late September, 2022, rather than late August, 2022. I can't tell you everybody, how much that basically throws a wrench in my overall training plan for 2022. So 
It's just like the timing of life is sometimes, I'll just say wild. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Ron, you get the comment of the day. Here we go. Let's break it down. And yes, we will. I just can't open a cake alone here in the basement. We will open up the running shoe cake with the family, with the big boys at some point this week. Don't worry. It's being refrigerated right now. So um, I don't want to talk forever and ever. So here we go. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do a throwback clip to three months ago when I started preparing for the Pikes Peak Marathon 2021. And it's very relevant. It's very interesting to go back and watch it. This is from downtown Denver three months ago as I was laying out my, what did I call the vlog? I said, I think I titled it, Getting, Leaving the Comfort Zone. How am I going to leave the comfort zone after winning the Pikes Peak Marathon in 2020 and trying to come back and, you know, win it again. All right, so let's roll the tape. I don't know how much I'm gonna play, but it's, it's interesting to see the, uh, the perspective from three months ago. Go. True Love and I have talked about it in the last couple days. Absolutely, the like there is, it's staging a house. I tweeted this out yesterday. Staging a house is no joke. And for anybody that does that for a living, mad respect to you. Like it is the real deal, staging houses correctly and doing it well. So anyway, we're in the, we're in the thick of it right now. But what it allows me to do is focus my training 100% on Pikes Peak. And I've got big goals for Pikes Peak in 2021. Even though I won the marathon last year and I know the competition is gonna be much higher in 2021 because as travel opens up around the world, more of the best international runners from around the world are gonna show up at Pikes Peak 100%. So I'm not uh, delusional as to the level of competition that I'm going to face. Yes, it's crazy, 90 days from today. And I titled my run on Strava this morning, Pikes Peak Day One, meaning we've got 90 days to go. It's unbelievable. And in 2020, I know, exactly. So the question becomes, okay, how do you uh, avoid complacency and maybe you just won the state title maybe you're in high school you just won the state title for the one mile or the two mile as a junior and now you have to think about okay how do i stay motivated for the next year to come back and defend your title or who knows maybe you have won the local 10k at your in your hometown every fourth of july and for the last like three years and you're coming back for your fourth title in the let's just say the 60 to 65 age range and you're just like figuring out okay what do I need to do to come back and defend my title on July 4th? So that's the, the crux of it for me right now is leaving behind the comfort zone, okay? I mean, I'm, I, I achieved the life goal. The life, I, since I was in middle school, high school, my goal was to win the Pikes Peak Marathon. And so I'm kind of in that comfort zone right now and I'm asking myself as I begin this next training block knowing Exactly, last year, what I did for volume, for vertical gain per week, how many hours I spent above 11,000 feet last summer, how many times I ran up Pikes Peak, yes, with a weighted vest on, um, the amount of, you know, what I was doing in the gym, what my sleep patterns were in 2020 last summer. So I have all these data points to work with and ask myself and challenge myself, what is the next step to leave my comfort zone to become uncomfortable over the next 90 days so that I can, yes, compete with all the runners that are going to show up from around the world, attempt to defend that title, and frankly, I'll just say to run even faster. Okay, and actually, here are this is crazy. Here are the times on your screen right now. The, so I've done the ascent, I think I did the ascent twice or maybe it was three times. I think the ascent three times and then the marathon once. Last year was my first Pikes Peak Marathon. So that was on the heels of learning that the Zagama mountain race in Northern Spain was canceled, okay? And I realized that was kind of a long clip, but it's fascinating to see. And what did I say in that clip? How do I, and this is, I always want to apply it back to you. How do you avoid complacency in your training, in your discipline, in your goals, in your future ambitions. I'll just leave it there. All right, so, so that's what I was asking myself three months ago. So here's the deal. I'm just gonna break it down very quickly here. How did I get faster? And I am gonna put this progression of times title on the screen at some point in the next you know, 30 seconds. Um, I, the easy answers. 
How did I run faster? So I ran two minutes and about 45 seconds faster for the ascent from 2020 to 2021, which I somebody did some research, I think puts me about eighth all time for the Pikes Peak Ascent time. Pretty exciting as a 36 year old, uh, but I ran almost down to the second, the exact same time for the round trip, just so you're aware. Okay, so the easy answer is that instead of run, so volume, uh, vertical gain, strength, and then there's one more that I wanna share here in a second. Volume, instead of running 115 to 120 miles a week from 2020, this year I was running about one, I, I topped out at 130 miles for the week. So yes, I added a little bit more volume from last year, okay, about 10 miles per week. Also, more vertical gain. So I went from about that 12 to, if you listen and watch very carefully to this channel, you know that I've recommended in the past for myself um, 12 to 15,000 feet of vertical gain per week to get ready for, and I realize these numbers won't apply to everybody, but I just, I'm communicating here. And this year I was more like 16. I topped out, I think I hit 21,000 vertical feet in one week preparing for the 2021 Pikes Peak Marathon. Okay, so the vertical gain went up. Strength training, the weighted vest. I wore it three times, okay? And it's, it's heavy. It's heavier than the ankle weights that I wore in 2020. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it there. I feel stronger. I'm pushing the sled. Last but not least, the mystery, why am I racing faster, specifically in the mountains, specifically from Pikes Peak in 2021? Like 245 is a good chunk of time to cut off in one year. Um, road half marathons. The, the fact that I was able to PR my half marathon, again, as a, I guess at that point I was 35 years old, um, in Naples, Florida, I do believe that that turnover practice helped me this year in 2021 for the Pikes Peak Marathon. I felt so much more, I'm even just explosive off of the starting line in August in Manitou Springs versus 2020. And so I'm excited and I gotta keep this in mind as I'm preparing and planning. And again, applying it back to you. If you're getting, if you want to PR in the in the in a 10 miler or a half marathon, you might want to pencil in some 5K and 10K road races at some point in 2021, in 2022, in order to keep that turnover going as we all get older. Okay, I'll just I'll just put it that way. So there you go. I'm gonna stop there. Here's one more time the progression of times on your screen. Uh, for my Pikes Peak Ascent times, Pikes Peak Marathon times, and it's it's just wild. It's wild. But again, we all have goals, we all have dreams, and it's fun to track these numbers. And that's one of the, it came up in the live stream yesterday. Seth, why do you keep doing the same races? Well, I do repeat races, but I also do new races as well. I think it was Tulio. Tulio, um, it is fun to get these data points year after year, or look at these numbers like, over the last decade of progression for the Pikes Peak Mar uh, Ascent specifically for the uh, over the last decade, okay? So onward and upward, today's run was 22 miles, about 6.55 a mile. Man, I think tomorrow I'm gonna talk about the New York City Marathon roller coaster, and I'm definitely, I'm pushing it everybody. Uh, mad scientist, I'm taking calculated risks, Oh man, so come back tomorrow if you wanna hear more about my thoughts on volume for New York City Marathon. Oh boy, it's getting kind of serious, but I'm gonna leave it there. Question of the day, uh, here we go. What was a, I think I'm gonna go this route. What was a difficult lesson that you have learned from a training block in the last, let's say 24 months? Okay, so the last two years. What was a difficult lesson for me it's, a, it's frankly waking up at 345 in order to get to the mountains more, in order to get more vertical gain, in order to get the vlog done for all of you before dinner time at 5.30 p.m. here at the Demore household. Like that was a hard lesson. Like 345 a.m. wake up is no joke, but it's a lesson I've learned. And um, as long as I'm getting to bed early enough, it's working out right now. I love you, DGR strong, and we will toss it to the Pikes Peak Race full analysis. Pikes Peak Race full analysis 
right about here right about here everybody all right come on now come on seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow